It's time for Rick Bentley's TV Beat television program. Stay tuned for former Fresno Bee media and entertainment writer Rick Bentley as he brings the TV Beat column to television with the latest news of what's happening in local radio, television, and more. And now, here's Rick Bentley. Hello, and thank you for tuning in to see the first episode of TV Beat with Rick Bentley. Now, those of you who have been readers of the Fresno Bee for the past 18 years might recognize my name as I was the TV and film critic there. Yeah, I know seeing only my words was something you like doing, but now you have to stare into my face, and that's a big challenge. But trust me, that's not as big a challenge as I'm having making this adjustment. I spent most of my life typing a, a typewriter, and yes, when I started in this business, I used a typewriter, or on a computer screen. Nobody ever saw me, and, and now we're making this big transition. And I'll tell you more about why I'm making this transition in a few minutes. But before I, I switch away and, and give you a quick break away from looking at me already, <laughs> what I want to do is tell you, take a moment, Go find a pencil and paper. I'm going to give you some web addresses and some email addresses and some other information. You're going to want to write it down. And I swear, if you try to do it when I'm giving it to you, you're going to miss it. And, and there'll be options for you to find it later. But we're going to make it easy on you. So go find that pencil and paper. And when you do, come on back, settle in for the next 30 minutes, because I'm going to give you some information about what's going on locally in TV and radio. I also have a very, very, very special guest for my first show. So anyway, we got it started. That's, that's the first opening. It's under my belt now. I swear to you I'm going to get better. So go off for a few seconds, find that pencil paper, and come right on back. Delicious. What can I get you? Grilled chicken Caesar salad. Number 41. You know I love that steak and jack. Everything on that? The works. Ooh, it's so hard to choose. Let me get the 35, the 41, and the 24. Absolutely. Number 44, chipotle chicken. Turkey, avocado, and sprouts. Number 45, barbecue tri-tip. I love the bread. The meat. The crisp lettuce. Lots of avocado. Everything. Fresh ingredients just taste better at Deli Delicious. Delicious. You know us, we're the Fresno Breakfast House, a great place for breakfast or lunch. Did you know we have a beautiful banquet facility? The Grand Banquet Room, adjacent to the Fresno Breakfast House. It's one of Fresno's newest event venues. Our location makes the perfect event center for bridal and baby showers, birthday parties, award ceremonies, family reunions, holiday parties, and conferences. Our lovely venue includes AV equipment and can host up to 130 guests. We combine casual elegance with unbeatable values. Call the Grand Banquet Room for your next occasion. Well, thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. Hey, look, I'm not going to dwell on the past, but I really felt like I needed to start with this first show of explaining why I went from being a, a guy who was in print for so many years to, to being uh, on TV. It is a, a big change, and so I want to clear up a little things for you. Uh, a few months ago, uh, the Fresno Bee went through some changes. They, start, they decided to take a different direction in the way they covered news, and that meant a cutback on entertainment coverage. Well, because of that, I was one of the people that was let go, along with a dear, dear friend in Donald Monroe. So I really felt like my days of covering local television and radio and talk, telling you guys about what was good at the movies and on TV were over, because there weren't that many other newspapers in this town to go to. Well, enter a guy by the name of Gary Coca-Cola. Now, I don't know how many of you know Gary, but Gary owns about 6,000 TV, well, no, he doesn't. It was about 43 TV stations in the Fresno market. And Gary's been a real innovator as far as giving people a chance to uh, show their talents in a different way. So Gary came up with this idea of what it would be like if I took my TV and radio beat that I did every Thursday and bring it to television. Now, it's different because you're not gonna, it's going to be a lot more talking. I'm going to try to do some film clips. I'm also going to have some special guests, and that's going to be a big difference for me because there's a lot of people in this town who are very talented, have a lot to say about the TV and radio world, who didn't get a lot of chances because I was always very limited about what I could do as far as the print version was concerned. So this really does open up a lot of opportunities for me. Uh, uh, it was upsetting that the B made changes, but you know what? Everything moves ahead. And in this world of the internet and online 
programming and all that sort of stuff. This really is kind of the future of things. So I look forward to being part of this. Now, you're going to have to forgive me the first few episodes because I'm going to be bumbling along. I've been so used to sitting on that side of the, of the, the screen and talking about what people were doing right and wrong. It's going to take a little bit to, for me to adjust. So please bear with me. Now, I do have to thank you for finding this show. Uh, I'm hoping that you will come back. We're going to be doing this every two weeks, uh, and so it'll be easy to know when, you're, when it's going to be on. What I need you to do is really go out and sort of spread the word for me. We're going to be doing ourselves through social media and other ways, but I really need you, your help. Uh, I want you to, uh, to tell people that uh, if they want to see the show as you found it, it's going to be on KGMC channel 43.5, which is also known as Antenna TV. And if you have Comcast, that's channel 378. You know that, but that's what I need to tell you to tell your friends. So spread the word. I really appreciate that. Now, uh, if, you, if you want to tell the friends that they want to get caught up, these, this episode right here, will be on the new website for the show. And that website address, this is where I told you you were going to need a pencil and paper, is www.rickbentley, and that's B-E-N-T-L-E-Y, tvbeat.com, all lowercase. You type that in, you're going to come to the new website. You not only will have this show, but you'll have a printed version of the show. You'll also find some extras that I'm going to be putting along the way. Again, it's going to be a work in progress, so give us some time. It will build along the way. I'm also looking for your input. If there's questions you have, that was the great thing about working at the B was I would get emails and calls from people going, hey, what happened to that disc jockey? Or what happened to that anchor? Or where did my favorite show go? Or why did you cancel Matlock? I got all these questions, and it would set me off onto trying to find the answers. So if you have a question, please send me an email to, again, you needed the pencil and paper, to rb at rickbentley, B-E-N-T-L-E-Y, tvb.com, all lowercase. Send those emails, and I will do my very, very best to try to answer those questions for you. Now, you can also give me comments. I'll take any feedback. I've enjoyed that all my life. All I'm asking, be a little civil. Please don't question my heritage. Please don't use any profanity. Just be nice about it. But you can question anything you want. Again, I'm begging you, that because this is a first effort, cut me some slack. But then again, you don't have to pull back completely. All right, like I said, I've got some news for you about some stuff that's gone on locally, about some, some people who are connected to a national TV show, uh, some work by a local anchor that I, I really like. But the main thing about this show is I'm going to get the chance to talk to people I really admire and I really feel have a lot to say about what's going on in TV and radio in this market. Now, when it came time for me to try to decide who would be my first guest, I felt like, you know, Jay Leno trying to come up with his first guest or... Uh, you've got to get that right person. I needed somebody who really was knowledgeable, who I, I thought was really professional, was an expert in their field, but also somebody who I knew could tell great stories, uh, somebody I admire, and, and somebody who's been a, who's become a, a friend over the years, but the, uh, although we kept it at a professional length because I was writing about him and, uh, and t telling you about his career and what was going on with that. So what I decided was, if it was going to be anybody for my first guest, it was going to be Greg Lane. Now, Greg is currently can be seen on a Midday Slot on, right. on the Wolf 102.7. Right. And you've been there now. How long have you been at the Wolf? I've been at the Wolf for about three years now. Time's okay. flown by. I can't believe how fast I, it goes. I know. And you and I went through the whole transition from your previous job and right. all that sort of stuff. So I've gotten to know Greg very well. So what I want to do is, is sort of let you get to know Greg really well. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to take a little break in just a second. And when we come back, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about Greg. Let him talk about this is a guy who's probably done as many celebrity interviews as I have done. But his, so he's got a great knowledge of the music industry, of the entertainment, of both country music and pop music. So he's a guy that's going to really be able to tell you a lot. And again, I think uh, after you see him here, you're going to want to tune, tune into him. Uh, weekdays, midday slot. Remember, that's the Wolf uh, 102.7. So right now, I'm going to take a little bit of break because I'm really out of breath. This is, again, <laughs> I got to learn to pace myself. This is, this is not a sprint. It's a marathon, so I'm going to get used to that. But uh, we will be back pretty quickly. So again, hang on to that pencil paper. There'll be more stuff for you to write down later. Uh, until then, uh, take, take a moment to do whatever you have to do and then come on back. <laughs>
Come experience Lin's Fusion, where the flavors of Asia come together. Lunch or dinner, Lin's offers an endless buffet, including sushi, dim sum, vegetarian, teppanyaki, all freshly prepared with warm family hospitality. Complete your meal with one of 14 flavors of exotic tea prepared at your table. Lin's Fusion, where the flavors of Asia come together seven days a week. 5155 North Blackstone in Fresno. Visit us on the web at linsfusion.com. Richard's, a valley dining tradition, serving great food since 1969, including Richard's famous deluxe dinner for two, multiple choices at a fixed price, great tasting steaks or seafood, Richard's deluxe dinner for two, a favorite, it even includes wine. A Central Valley dining tradition on historic Belmont off 180. Follow our neon sign to Richard's, where you'll find something special and something good right on the menu. Well, welcome back to uh, TV Beat with Rick Bentley. Again, thank you for coming back. I, I know a lot of you thought, well, maybe it's time to tune over to something else, but trust me, this is the part of the show. If there's anything you want to, this is the part you need to be here for because I have a, a very special guest in Greg Lane. Thank Greg, you. I can't, before we get started, I really do, uh, I want to thank you for doing this for me because, you know, you, you've stepped into this sort of new world with me and, and it's nice to have you there to, to make take well, the journey. The thing is, is that by being the first guest, the bar's real low. Yeah. So and the expectation is real low. So I should be fine. There's a bar here. Well, you already found the bar. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I was walking well, around while you were doing your opening. Uh, yeah. Thing. We'll, we'll we'll meet there later. Absolutely. So. No, but I think this is great, and and I'm I'm really glad that you found this because you're going to be able to fill the void because every Thursday, that's how I started yeah. my day. You know, and and I'm glad you're going to be doing this, and and I'm and I'm thrilled. I'll get I'll get a bunch of guests for. You. I appreciate that. I, re I really do. And again. You're always fun to, to work with and talk to, and, and so. But what I want to let these people know is a little bit about you. It's so, okay. So, when did you know you wanted to get into radio? Sixth grade, in a little town in Rochelle, Illinois. And, and, and uh, where's where's Rochelle? It's in Illinois. It's about oh, it's about you... eighty miles south of Chicago. Okay, that's okay. Fine. So okay. it's kind of, and at that at the, a little radio station up up in town, and I went with my my buddy Tom, and we took our bikes down and 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 just. Looked at this radio station, and I walked in, and I saw some copy and started reading it, and I went from wanting to be a scientist and a chemist and an astronaut to wanting to go into radio. What would your parents say? Well, I can't see you going home going, you know, you know I, I, I've decided not to go to the moon. I'm going to go. Although, I've had a few people make the offer. To send you to the yeah, moon. Yeah, one way. I mean, <laughs> yeah. not a problem. No, it was yeah. really funny. The only thing I think that was, was a bigger adjustment was because radio is about audio, so then all of a sudden, you know, chemistry went to loud music. Oh. So, you know, that was, that was the only thing. But it, it, it was really, it was a fun transition, and, and it took me a while to be able to do it. Right. But once, once I got into radio, which it took a while, um, I haven't looked back. Well, you said it take a, took a while. Was well, I was, I, you know, I was only in sixth grade, so I had to go through right. high school, and right. then I went into college. And, and, uh, Where was college? College of San Mateo and okay. uh, San Francisco State. Okay. And it was a, a great experience. And then I got out of... Of college and all these other jobs that had nothing to do with radio oh. presented themselves and they were good paying jobs and there were all these kind of things and one day I finally said if I don't do it now I never will so I took an air check to a station in Livermore KKIQ in Livermore walked in handed my air check and a couple weeks later they said yeah we'll put you on the middle of the night oh. mistake number one you never want to tell all your friends to be listening yeah because I didn't know how nervous I was gonna be I'm, this is I've always wanted to do this <laughs> now I'm doing it and I'm, we had records to queue up and, and, and my hands are shaking and I'm just nervous as I'll get out. But it was really fun. And, and it's the best job in the world. It was the best job then and it's the best job now. You know, people don't realize now, I, there was a big change in radio. Oh, that, yeah. Because there was a time when midnight was when, you t when everybody learned. You threw them in there because if they messed up, the ratings right. it didn't matter. Yeah, exactly. And then, then you got, if you were good, you moved to the weekends, and then you would move on, right. you know, that sort of thing. Go from 7 to midnight, then move into other shifts. Yeah. But, but because of automation and everything, there's not those, those slots aren't around much anymore. And that's right? a sad part, because there's no place for people to really learn. You just sort of have to get thrown in. But, um, and radio has changed. Like every, like every industry, it's changed a lot for the better. Some for the not so better, but yeah. for the most part, um, I like the fact that the equipment we're using now is just so amazing to work with. I mean, editing and all these things are so easy now with a computer. It, it really makes a difference. Now, that first station you went into was it? What format was it? It was top forty, but that okay. was top forty when you had you, you mixed all kinds of different. So it's not the top forty today. With this was uh, Stairway to Heaven, 
uh, followed by Barbra Streisand and followed by the Gap Band. I mean, wow. it was truly, oh, truly a, a whole different e extreme. Yeah. But I mean, that's what Top 40 was at the time, and it was really fun. And and the interesting part about it was, I thought I was really good. Yeah. And it wasn't until later on that I found out how bad it really was. But I, my heart was in the right place. Right. You know? And again, if you got to fail, that's the place absolutely. to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think it was. It's a wonderful way to learn. Is mm -hmm. it to a situation where it's not critical? It's you know. Right. And again. Then people would move up and, and get into better time slots, and it was, right. it was just a national progression the thing. Now, you certainly in this market have been known for country music. Absolutely. When did you make the move into country? Uh, that happened in October of '91. When, when, when Kiss hired me, uh, they, it wasn't a country station; it was actually Top 40, and then it became country uh, in October of '91. And actually, and I, and I hate to admit this, but people understand. I think. I hated country. I thought country was the <laughs> worst format there was. And when they came and said, "This is what we're going to do." I thought, oh my gosh, and it took two weeks. Really? Um, my first pair of, they, they, they got me all set up, and my first pair of, of cowboy boots, I felt like I was walking backwards, but I got, I, I still have my first pair of cowboy boots and my first cowboy hat. Okay, now wait a minute. Uh, but that was why the, 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 91, but 91. Why did the heck did you have to wear cowboy boots and a hat? You're on radio. Well, but yeah, but we did go out. They did let us outside. Oh, okay. So, so you yeah. weren't necessarily. So, no, you were, you were yeah. just in your underwear when you're on, on the radio. Or, or anything. That's why. But okay. That's why we don't have cameras in the studio. Exactly. Well, but, that's changed these days. <laughs> now, yeah, you, now they do have. Now cameras you have to wear clothes. So. But it was really funny to to, uh, to to be able to take a a hobby and turn it into a career. Yeah. And and coming to Fresno, I spent ten years in Sacramento. That was a great experience. I loved it. Met my wife there, so I have nothing but fond memories. And here's what I liked about you, and what I've always admired about you, is the fact you took a job like so many people do. I've got a radio job. I'm going to do my job, but you pushed it. You would do these interviews. You oh, would yeah. go back to Nash. You took the job at heart and said, "I'm not just going to phone it in. I'm just I'm just not going to come in every day, do my bit, and yeah. go home." And that's what I've admired about you. And it's sort of given you a chance. You've talked to some of the biggest names in, in music, haven't you? I've had the privilege of talking to just about everybody. And, and, and I've been really lucky. That, going back to the CMAs was such a great experience because, and I know you've done it with, with uh, Hollywood and stuff, but you go into a situation where you have three days of interviews and you're interviewing 20 artists a day. And, and, and what I really loved about it, and, and I'm going to be doing it again. In fact, I think this time we're going to take you with me because uh -huh. now, now you need to go. But... What I loved about it was you could take and talk to artists about when they were in Fresno. Because every every artist comes through this town. Everybody, whether they're, you know, no matter who, especially with the Samar Center. Yeah. And it's always been fun to hear the stories about how people enjoyed their, their stay. Okay, time's going to run out real quick for me, but right. I want to ask you one quick question okay. about I mean, your connection to Taylor Swift. <laughs> I that, mean, you were one of the first people to talk to, the, to her. I was the second person in the country to put her on the air. Wow. And, and and it was one of those things. She came into the station. There was nobody there. I mean, you know, and, and it was just one of those weird situations. Uh, normally, we don't put new artists on the air. And it's certainly, we don't put new artists on the air without getting permission. But there was something about Taylor that I thought, this, I think she's going to be something big. I think. I, I, you, and, they were you know, pretty close. You yeah. Were, yeah. And so she came in. She sang. It was, it was cute because she was so nervous. I mean, she was only like 16 at the time. Mm -hmm. And she was so nervous, but she came and she did her song, and we did the interview. And for years after that, I would see her every year at the CMAs, and, and we really bonded when all that was going on. And I figured if I got to get one right in my career, th uh, that was a good one. And now yeah. look where she is today. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, it, yeah. it's amazing. But. Well, that's what, again, this shows the, your eye for the for talent, your ear for talent, and again. Combine that with what I think is one of the better voices in radio. Well, thank you. And, and again, I'm a guy who puts his time in. I, that's why I wanted you to be my first guest. And again, I can't thank you enough for doing it. My that. pleasure. Have me right, come back. I, I can tell more stories. Last time, it's a blatant plug for anything going on? You know what? We are giving the the listeners the opportunity this summer to do some free concerts. I'm on from 9 to 3 um, every day on 1027 The Wolf, and I would love it if people to wolf and work. While they're working at while they're at work and listening to the wolf is great. Okay, that's All right. That's another so thing. Please, you need, I need the help. But another <laughs> thing you need to have written down. You, you had that pencil and paper. So tune in to hear Greg. He's a great guy. Thank All you. right, that wraps up this part of the show. I'm going to give you another little break. and will be back in just a moment. <laughs> Take a vacation for an hour at Toledo's Mexican Restaurant. Come and enjoy our open-air patio and relax with a perfect margarita tucked away in the Mission Village Shopping Center on Shaw and Fresno. Toledo's Mexican Restaurant. Comida auténtica. 
Ginza's Finer Dining is a culinary pleasure for fans of Asian cuisine. Our menu features interesting textures, aromatic flavors, combined with beautiful presentations wrapped all together in a sophisticated atmosphere to make your visit here a memorable experience. Ginza, it is a masterful mix of Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, sushi, and hibachi grill style dishes. We hope you enjoy eating at Ginza as much as we enjoy serving you. All right, well, welcome back to the, the next segment of TV Beat with Rick Bentley. Again, I'm just thanking, I'll probably do this 50 times before we're done, but thank you for coming back. Thanks for tuning in. First show, and uh, you expected no, I expected nobody to tune in, so the fact that somebody's out there watching makes me feel really good. All right, now the, this is the portion of the show where I'm going to try to give you some updates on what's going on locally in television and film and, and, uh, uh, not, and uh, radio. Sorry. Uh, so what we're going to start with is uh, it's some information that came, comes from CMAC. Now, I don't know how many of you know what CMAC is. It's the local public access uh, uh, sc scenario downtown. You can go there and learn how to shoot videos, and they, they have their own channels and everything like that. Well, they've got a great program coming up this summer. Uh, you know, we're in this era right now where a lot of people like to shoot videos and post them on YouTube and all over the Internet. And so... Uh, CMAC is offering a course for young people to help them make those videos a little bit better, a little bit more than just, you know, a selfie. Uh, what they've got is a, uh, a camp. It's called a youth filmmaking camp that's going to run uh, August 1st through the 4th. Now, what's going to happen is that CMAC staff members will guide the child through a, it's a four-day filmmaking camp where they'll, uh, they'll produce uh, direct and act in a short film developed from one of their own original scripts. So what you've got is instead of having the, the kid laying around on the couch all, all summer just sort of shooting selfies and everything, they're actually learning how to, 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 to make better films. They'll, uh, they'll learn about cinematography, uh, using an iPad camera kit, they'll learn about lighting, uh, editing with iMovie software. Uh, there's also some pluses. The campers will receive a CMAC t-shirt, uh, daily snacks, a flash drive containing their short film, and a one-year CMAC sub uh, membership. And I'm telling you, once you get involved with CMAC, th these, there's, a, there's a lot of opportunities there. They have studios you can use, equipment you can check out. Uh, you really need to check into CMAC. It, they're doing a great job. Now, this, those short films that are made will be screened for the campers, their families, and friends at noon, uh, Friday, August the 4th at 12 p.m. All right, then those, they'll be shown on uh, Comcast channels 94 and AT&T channel 99. There is a cost. It's going to cost $75 per attendee. Now, they're limiting this to only 15 people. So I would suggest you go to the CMAC website and register and find out more details. I think this is something your children will really love, and I think it will prove uh, all the filmmaking they're going to be doing. This is the new wave, so they, they, if they, they get some training, it's going to make things a lot better for them. All right. Uh, one of the great things about working at, uh, here in Fresno was I always had the opportunity to write about people who got to be on national TV programs. I don't think you realize that we are so close to L.A. that when there was an, uh, a reality show or a competition show, it wasn't that far to drive down to be on it. And so all through those years I was writing for the B, I was always writing about somebody who was on a new show or, or doing uh, some new reality program or, or, or even starring in a show. We have a lot of people from this area who have become actors. Well, a uh, recent episode of American Ninja Warriors uh, had a woman on there by the name of Zaniqua Lovett. Now, she's from Visalia, and she competed in one of the early rounds. And... Uh, of all the women that competed that night, she went the furthest. Now, she didn't complete the course. I don't know if you've ever seen American Ninja Warrior, but that final, that final thing they have to go through is this giant wall they have to run up, and that's what beat her. But no other woman had even gotten close. So what has happened with that is she got that far. She's made it to the semifinals. Now, they're going to air sometime in July. I don't have an exact date on that right now. As soon as I do, I'll let you know. But again, it's nice to see somebody from this area who's getting national attention. All right, here's a, a couple of stories I'm keeping an eye on for you. Uh, uh, veteran uh, Casey anchor Stephanie Berugian has made another trip to Armenia. Now, I don't know if you know this, but a few years ago, uh, Stephanie and her photographer uh, went to, to Armenia, spent a few days there, and, and they, they 
got a whole bunch of, of stories that aired over several weeks on the, the local NBC affiliate. Well, she went back again. This time she was mainly going to, uh, to cover the Aurora Prize for Awaking Humanity. But while she was there, they shot a lot of other footage and a lot of other stories. And uh, what she did with the first round of stories was really give you a beautiful insight into the culture and the people and the history of Armenia. So I can guarantee you that's exactly what's going to happen with this round of, of film and footage that they got while they were there. Again, I don't have an exact date of when those are going to air in July on Casey, but I'll keep you posted on that because I really do think you're going to want to tune in. The, the last work was, was really, really good. And finally, I'm keeping a close eye on what's going on at the CW, that's Channel 53.1. Now, they're planning on making some big moves in the mor their weekday morning slots. Looks like there's going to take about two hours of those early morning slots. I'm hearing 8 to 10 and make that uh, programming for children. Now, there's no word on what the programming is going to be or, or uh, whether that could be extended. What, and there's programming there right now. There are talk shows in those slots. I don't know where they're going to move to, but there is going to be some big changes at the CW in the morning. And it's, this is always especially nice. I love when I can talk about programming designed for children. And uh, this is going to be a nice big move for the CW. So I'll keep you posted on that. Obviously, this is going to be a lot of programming for the Warner Brothers catalog because the CW is connected to them, which means there's a lot of programming out there, both educational and entertainment, that they could choose from. Again, don't have any details, but the idea of this program is to keep you up on what could be happening, and as it begins to unfold and begins to take shape, I'll be able to come back and give you more information. And this is why I need you to send me your questions. If you're wanting more about some programming like that, why isn't there more programming for children or anything like that, send me an email. You have, I've told you before, my email address, but again, grab that pencil paper, I'll tell you one more time. It's rb at rickbentleytvbeat.com. Uh, you can find the information there. You can send me information. It's a way of us staying in touch. And that's the main thing about this. I want this to be an interactive program. I, you know, it's hard enough just to sit here and talk for 30 minutes. If I, I, it's really impossible if I don't have anything to say. And I want what I'm saying to be very important to you. So it's up to you. You can be passive about this and sit at home all you want. But what I need you to do is sort of take your time spread the word, and then send me some, some questions and some information. All right, that's what I've got as far as news this week. Obviously, in the next two weeks from now, when we do the next program, there should be a lot more news. I can give you some updates. Uh, but for right now, we'll take one last break, and then I'll come back and uh, have a final thought for you. Richards, a valley dining tradition, serving great food since 1969, including Richards' famous deluxe dinner for two, multiple choices at a fixed price, great tasting steaks or seafood, Richards deluxe dinner for two, a favorite, it even includes wine. A Central Valley dining tradition on historic Belmont off 180. Follow our neon sign to Richards, where you'll find something special and something good right on the menu. Welcome back. I did it. I got through that first episode. Uh, I really appreciate you being here for, for the first time. Uh, I hope you'll come back. I hope you spread the word. Uh, like I said, this is gonna, I want this to be an interactive show. It's a show for you. You have questions. You have stuff you want me to talk about. Feel free to send me that information. Again, I want to repeat the email address, rbentley at rickbentleytvb.com. It's there on your screen. I hope you wrote it down. Uh, but uh, send, me, send me that information. Reach out to me. Uh, this is going to be very important that we stay connected uh, because this is a show for you, and I need all the support I can get because, again, this is a brave new world for me after spending all those years staring only into a computer screen. A camera is a lot different. So got through the first week. I hope I didn't bore you. I thank you for your time, and I hope to see you on the next episode of TB Beat with Rick Bentley.